Let's move on to how respiration takes place in animals. We have a look at unicellular organisms like the amoeba. We look at annelids like earthworms, aquatic animals like fish or prawns, insects like the grasshopper, ant, mosquito, and of course, land animals like man, birds, frog, etc. All these need to respire. The mode of respiration in organisms may be unicellular or multicellular and is different compared to plants. Different animals have different modes of respiration. The unicellular, example the amoeba, annelids, example the earthworm, aquatic, example fish, insects, example the grasshopper, and land animals, example, man. Let's have a look at these. In unicellular organisms, respiration is by a mode of diffusion through the cell membrane. In annelids, the earthworms live in the soil and the skin is adapted for the intake of absorption of oxygen and the release of carbon dioxide. In aquatic animals like fish, prawns, these are some types that have gills to take in oxygen that's already dissolved in the water and they release carbon dioxide. Insects such as grasshoppers, mosquitoes, flies have air pipes or tiny holes called spiracles through which they breathe and they take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. In land animals, Humans, birds, frogs, etc. are larger organisms and their mode of respiration is different in comparison to others mentioned. They possess organs like lungs to carry out their respiratory processes. How does respiration in a unicellular organism like an amoeba takes place? It takes place by the mode of diffusion by which the amoeba respires. Oxygen from the water is taken in through the cell membrane and used, while carbon dioxide is released to the sa same cell membrane. As the amoeba is a single-celled organism, diffusion of oxygen through the entire body is fast and spreads quickly into the whole body. Take a look at the diagram. Oxygen from the water diffuses into the amoeba through the cell membrane and the respiration uses that oxygen and produces carbon dioxide. As a result, the carbon dioxide then diffuses out via the cell, same cell membrane. In earthworms, earthworms have skins that are thin and moist and they have a good supply of blood vessels. The gaseous exchange takes place through this skin. They absorb oxygen through the moist skin which is transported by the blood vessels where it is used in respiration and the carbon dioxide produced is carried back by the blood vessels and expelled through the moist skin. Fish have special organs for breathing called gills. These gills are located on either sides of the fish's body. The water dissolved in the oak has dissolved oxygen and when it flows through the mouth of the fish, oxygen flows through the gills and is extracted and absorbed by the blood vessels that line the gills, which then carry the oxygen and distribute it to parts of the body of the fish. Once the oxygen has been utilized, the carbon dioxide is carried by the blood vessels and expelled via the gills. Fish can only dissolve the oxygen present in water. Fish do not have lungs. If taken out of water, they will die as the oxygen concentration in the atmosphere is too high for the fish and the gills are not developed for these purposes. But some other sea animals like dolphins and whales have no gills and as a result have to come to the surface of the water to breathe. Similarly, we humans cannot breathe underwater and use our lungs to breathe and respire on land. Let's look at how respiration in humans takes place. Humans, like all other organisms, need to respire. 
To do so, they need to breathe oxygen. They get this from the atmosphere. The oxygen they use is derived, the oxygen they derive is used to break down the food absorbed in the body to release energy. As a result, the two byproducts are carbon dioxide and water. The respiratory system in humans is responsible for all gaseous exchange, from breathing in oxygen to producing energy by breaking down food and to release carbon dioxide. All this conversion and exchange of gases takes place in the lungs with the help of blood and blood vessels. In order for any gaseous exchange to take place, the mechanism of breathing is involved. Let's take a look at what breathing in and breathing out is. This process is called inhalation, meaning breathing in, and involves the taking in of air or oxygen through the nostrils into the nasal cavity called the pharynx, which is connected to the trachea or windpipe. Windpipe in turn is connected to the bronchus, of which there are two, and further splits into the bronchioles. Both the bronchus and bronchioles are encased within the lungs and surrounded and connected by minute blood capillaries that receive and supply the oxygen to parts of the body. This oxygen, once used by the cells, is carried back by the blood capillaries in the form of carbon dioxide and released out through the same route the oxygen entered. This mechanism is called exhalation or breathing out. I hope you have enjoyed the presentations. If you'd like to see more presentations, you can always visit us on our website at www.arinjacademy.com. Furthermore, for a subscription, you could always check us out on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash arinjacademy. You can subscribe to us also on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash Academy. Thank you.